हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ साक्षी निरा एंड माई कॉर्डिनेटर्स नेम इज तेजस पडवार वैष्णवी पानेरकर एंड दर्शन पाटिल वी आर स्टडिंग इन फाइनल इयर बी फार्मसी फ्रॉम शिवाजीराव एस दोंधे कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मसी आवर टॉपिक फॉर प्रोजेक्ट इज वैक्सीन्स अंडर द गाइडन्स ऑफ डॉक्टर नितिन मोहिरे प्रोफेसर एंड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ अवर कॉलेज वैक्सीन्स अ प्रिपेरेशन दैट इज एडमिनिस्टर्ड एज बाय इंजेक्शन टू स्टिम्युलेट द बॉडीज इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स अगेन्स्ट अ स्पेसिफिक इन्फेक्शियस एजेंट और डिसीज The word vaccine originates from the Latin virile vaccine cowpox which Edward Jenner demonstrated in 1798 could prevent smallpox in humans. Two factors contribute to the ability of a vaccine to control or eliminate a disease. First is the effectiveness of a vaccine and second is the level of vaccination coverage achieved in a given population. Sera What is sera? Sera is that contains antibodies to specific bacteria or viruses or it can also be called as the clear yellowish fluid obtained upon separating whole blood into its solid and liquid components after it has been allowed to clot it is also called as blood serum difference between vaccines and sera vaccine vaccine is a antigenic substance prepared from the causative agent of a disease or a synthetic substitute used to provide immunity against one or several diseases contains dead bacteria or weak bacteria or toxins stimulates the body to make antioxidants gaining immunity after a period remain immune for long use a series of complex methods to separate and purify the virus and extract the required part reduce the low virulent or inactivated and produce vaccine vaccine consists of normally a single type of antibodies usually monoclonal or maybe for a particular disease sera the clear pale yellow liquid that separates from the clot in the coagulation of blood does not contain bacteria or toxins contains antiformed or other animal acquired immune immediately remain a short time specific animal by immunization whole blood collected in but the serum is a non specific mixture obtained after centrifugation type of vaccine first type is live attenuated examples are measles mumps rubella and varicella zoster second type is inactivated its examples are hepatitis a influenza pneumococcal polysaccharide third type is recombinant subunit example is hepatitis b fourth is toxoid example is tetanus and diphtheria fifth type is conjugated polysaccharide protein examples are pneumococcal meningococcal hemophilus influenza type b routes of administration there are four routes of administration along with their vaccines given in the particular route first is oral opv second is intradermal examples are bcg and rabies third is subcutaneous examples are measles mumps rubella mmr ipv pneumococcal and influenza fourth is intramuscular examples are dpt dt tetanus hepatitis a hepatitis b pneumococcal rabies hiv and influenza what does a vaccine contain it contains antigen adjuvant preservatives stabilizers surfactants residues and diluent first antigen all vaccines contain an active component the antigen which generates an immune response or the blueprint for making the active component the antigen may be a small part of these disease causing organisms like a protein or sugar or it may be the whole organism in a weakened or inactive form disease causing organism the key ingredient in a vaccine is the antigen it's either a tiny part of the disease causing organism or weakened non dangerous version so your body can learn the specific way to fight it without getting sick preservative preservatives ensure the sterility of the vaccine over the period of its shelf life stabilizers stabilizers prevent chemical actions from occurring within the vaccine and keep the vaccine components from sticking to the vaccine vial stabilizers can be sugars lactose sucrose amino acids like glycine gelatin and proteins like recombinant human albumin derived from yeast surfactants surfactants keep all the ingredients in the vaccine blended together 
they prevent settling and clumping of elements that are in liquid form of the vaccine they are often used in foods like ice cream residuals residuals are tiny amounts of various substances used during the manufacturing or production of vaccines that are not active ingredients in the completed vaccine next is diluent a diluent is a liquid used to dilute a vaccine to the correct concentration immediately prior to use the most commonly used diluent is sterile water adjuvant some vaccines also contain adjuvants an adjuvant improves the immune response to the vaccine sometimes by keeping the vaccine at the injection site for a little longer or by stimulating local immune cells the adjuvant may be on tiny amount of aluminum salts like aluminum phosphate aluminum hydroxide or potassium aluminum sulfate now let us see how vaccines are developed firstly pathogen is taken from which vaccine is to be developed then its dna or rna cdna is taken further it undergoes pcr that is polymerase chain reaction it is a test to detect genetic material from a specific organism that is virus then its dna or cdna is amplified that is its multiple copies are produced further this dna is used in recombination that is recombinant dna then the multiplication takes place and it is purified from this vaccine is formulated and sent for quality control process then more such vaccines are produced that is vaccine production further storage and transport lastly vaccination or immunization is carried out clinical trials clinical trials are a type of research that studies new tests and treatments and evaluates their effects on human health outcomes people behavioral to takes part in clinical trials to test medical interventions including drugs cells and other biological products surgical procedures radiological procedures devices behavioral treatments and preventive care clinical trials are carefully designed reviewed and completed and need to be approved before they can start people of all ages can take part in clinical trials including children phases of biomedical clinical trials there are four phases phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and phase 4 in phase 1 number of volunteers is small number of volunteers 10 to 20 and their aim is to determine right dosage and toxicity in phase 2 number of volunteer is several hundred volunteers aim is access safety and generation of immune response in phase 3 number of volunteers is thousands of volunteers aim is to effectiveness of vaccine against disease safety in larger group in phase 4 there are more than 10000 volunteers their aim is to study final country approval testing in wide number of population what is vaccine efficacy vaccine efficacy is the reduction in the incidence of disease amongst those who have been vaccinated relative to the incidence in the unvaccinated if a high level of vaccination coverage is achieved with an effective vaccine disease transmission can be interrupted when disease transmission is interrupted even those individuals who were not vaccinated or who were vaccinated and did not develop immunity will be protected from disease this effect is known as herd immunity vaccines offer strong protection but that protection takes time to build people must take all the required doses of a vaccine to build full immunity how safe are vaccines the benefits of vaccination are indisputable immunization has had one of the greatest impacts on health second only to clean drink water vaccines prevent health illness and or disability but because of the immune reactions that they induce vaccines can cause discomfort the vast majority of adverse events associated with vaccines are minor and transient these are typically pain at the injection site or mild fever vaccines should be expected to reduce the attack rates in the vaccinated population by 70 to 100% compared to the attack rates in the unvaccinated population who should not be vaccinated people with allergy fever hiv infection immunodeficiency ig administration neurological disorder prematurity reactions to previous vaccine simultaneous administration of vaccines and thrombocytopenia vaccines provided by government of india 
Government of India is providing vaccination to prevent seven vaccine preventable diseases (VPDs), namely diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio, measles, hepatitis B, BCG, JE vaccination, HIV, given as pentavalent containing HIV plus DPT plus hepatitis B. Currently available vaccines. Vaccines. First is rabies vaccine, which is developed by Louis Pasteur in 1885. Its causative agent is Rhabdoviridae. Age group is two or more than two years of age. Storage. Hermetically sealed light resistant containers at temperatures between two to eight degrees. Second vaccine is tetanus vaccine, developed by group of German scientists led by Emil von Behring in 1890. Its causative agent is Clostridium tetani. Its age group is three booster doses are given. Dose one during the second year of age. Dose two is given at four to seven years of age, and dose three is given at nine to fifteen years of age. Its storage is refrigerated between two degrees and eight degrees, that is thirty six degree Fahrenheit and forty six degree Fahrenheit. Third vaccine is the flu influenza vaccine. Which is developed by Jonas Stock and Thomas Francis in 1938. Its causative agent is influenza virus. Age group is children between six months to eight years. Its storage is two to eight degrees. Fourth vaccine is polio vaccine, or also called as Sabin vaccine. It is developed by Albert Sabin. Its causative agent is polio virus. Age group children under five years of age. Storage. It should be stored at twenty degrees Celsius, having shelf life of two years at minus twenty degrees Celsius, six month at two to eight degrees Celsius, and one to three days at room temperature. New approved vaccines. A number of new vaccines with major potential for controlling infectious disease just have been licensed or are at advanced stages of development. Among the illness targeted are rotavirus, diarrhea, pneumococcal disease, and cervical cancer, as caused by human papillomavirus, which together kill more than a million people each year, most of them in developing countries. Swine flu vaccine. Influenza virus growth in eggs. Before the development of cell culture, many viruses were propagated in embryonated chicken eggs. Today this method is most commonly used for growth of influenza virus the excellent yield of virus from chicken eggs has led to their widespread use in research laboratories and of vaccine production the different routes of inoculation into the eggs are shown as well as different compartments in which viruses replicate for influenza virus culture pathogen free eggs are used a non veined are is used to make a small nick and drill in the shell of virus injection a tuberculin syringe is used to inject virus through coriolanotonic membrane and placed in allantonic cavity the holes are filled with melted paraffin and stored at 37 degrees celsius for 48 hours the new virus particles are produced and are released into allantonic fluid using this method sufficient virus may be produced in one or two eggs to produce 15 mg dose of vaccine Now let us see the parts of eggs. That is amniotic cavity, shell, albumin, allantonic cavity, yolk sac, coriolanotonic membrane, air sac, and shell membrane. From coriolanotonic membrane inoculation, herpes simple simplex virus, pox virus, rose sarcoma virus are cultivated. From amniotic inoculation, influenza and mumps virus are cultivated. Yolk sac inoculation. herpes simplex virus is cultivated and from allantonic inoculation influenza virus mumps virus newcastle disease virus and avian adenovirus are cultivated h1n1 old infection and new treat h1n1 is a new virus that was first detected in people in april 2009 It was originally referred as swine flu because many of the gensings this new virus were similar to influenza virus that occur in pigs. Successful and safe vaccine for H1N1. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, part of the National Institute of Health, has conducted swine flu clinical trials to make sure the new swine flu vaccines are safe and effective.
they were conducted at eight universities research hospitals and medical organizations across the united states including baylor college of medicine in houston children's hospital medical care and cincinnati and armory university in atlanta who should get vaccinated for h1n1 cdc recommended influenza vaccination as the first and important step in protecting against the flu cdc is encouraging anyone who wants to protect themselves against 2009 h1n1 to get vaccinated including people 65 years and older while less likely to get sick with 2009 h1n1 than younger people people 65 are and older are at high risk of serious complications if they do become ill fda approved h1n1 vaccines the us food and drug administration and has approved four vaccines against the 2009 h1n1 influenza virus the vaccines are made by csl limited medi immune llc novartis vaccines and diagnostic limited and sanofi pasteur in pro all four firms manufacture the h1n1 vaccines using the same processes which have a long record of producing safe seasonal influenza vaccine malaria vaccines in progress when the mosquito bites the disease causing plasmodium gets transferred into the blood in the form of sporozoites sporozoites is a stage in the life cycle of plasmodium once they enter the blood stream they reach their target that is liver they attack liver cells and stay inside them for long time they reproduce in order to increase their number afterwards they release themselves into the blood stream by bursting out the liver cells the form in which they are released into the blood stream is known as merozoites merozoites target rbcs now in rbcs the merozoites develop into a ring like structure called trophozoite it has two fates firstly trophozoite began with asexual cycle to give rise to new merozoites it occurs exponentially the number of merozoites is too large for the rbcs to contain hence they are released out by bursting of the rbcs the released merozoites now attack new rbcs and keep increasing their number the other fate of the trophozoites is entering a sexual cycle with this the trophozoites give rise to two different gametocytes gametocytes are like the germ cells of plasmodium when a non infected mosquito approaches the infected human for blood then these gametocytes quickly pass into the mosquito's body with the sucked blood now in mosquito's body both male and female gametocytes which are like germ cells fuse to form a zygote that is the fertilization of these gametocytes results in the formation and development of zygote in the mosquito's gut from here structure called oocytes is developed and crosses the gut wall and reaches the salivary glands here the oocysts release the sporozoites which are the mature infective forms of parasite ready to infect a new healthy individual in its next human bite so when this female anopheles mosquito bites a healthy person the sporozoites get completely transferred thus repeating the complete cycle and causing the infection vaccine trials in malaria more than a dozen vaccine candidates are now in clinical development and one glaxo smith again biologicals rts s is in phase 3 clinical testing the first malaria vaccine candidate to advance third stage of testing phase 3 trial of the world's most clinically advanced malaria vaccine candidate was launched in kisumu kenya medical research institute or cdc research and public health collaboration vaccine candidate glaxo smith klein biological the vaccine candidate glaxo smith klein biological gsk bio rts s is the first of the current generation of malaria vaccines to warrant phase 3 testing on its on the scale the vaccine has a promising safety profile was more than 50% effective in reducing episode of clinical malaria in children 5 to 17 months old in earlier testing and can be administered together with the package of vaccinations routinely given to african children very young taken for trials in view of high mort- mortality or and morbidity phase 3 trials will demonstrated how the vaccine pro- performs in two groups of children 
वन एज सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व वीक्स एंड सेकेंड एज फाइव टू सेवेंटीन मंथ्स इन डिफरेंट ट्रांसमिशन सेटिंग्स अक्रॉस अ वाइड जोग्राफिक रीजन इन एफ्रीका मलेरिया वैक्सीन पॉसिबल इन नेक्स्ट फ्यू इयर्स इन फेज टू टेस्टिंग द वैक्सीन रेड्यूस्ड केसेस ऑफ मलेरिया इन यंग चिल्ड्रेन फाइव टू सेवेंटीन मंथ्स बाय फिफ्टी थ्री परसेंट इफ फेज थ्री रिजल्ट एज गुड द वैक्सीन वुड बी फुल्ली अवेलेबल इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव टू टेन ईयर्स why we should support vaccination we don't vaccinate just to protect our children we also vaccinate to protect our grandchildren and their grandchildren with one disease smallpox we stop the leak in the boat by eradicating the disease our children don't have to get smallpox shot any more because the disease no longer exists we keep vaccinating now parents in the future may be able to trust that disease like polio and meningitis won't infect cripple or kill children Vaccine controversies. The public health benefits of vaccination are exaggerated. Critics of vaccination policy point out that the mortality rates of some illness were already dramatically reduced before vaccines were introduced, and claim that further reductions cannot be immediately be attributed to vaccines. Secondary and long-term effect on the immune system from introducing immunogens directly into the bloodstream are not fully understood. Vaccinations contain chemical components that are known to be toxic, such as formaldehyde, aluminium in various compounds, acetone, glyceride, ethylene glycol, and neomycin when injected in large enough quantities. Anti-vaccine lobbyists: Not everyone believes that vaccines are good. Despite the ridiculousness of anti-vaccine arguments there are significant and influential followers they can bring untold damage to immunization programs and cause disease and deaths recent examples are north nigeria and polio statistical data of vaccination in india per year polio vaccine is given to 100 million people per year tt vaccine is given to 20 million people per year BCG vaccine is given to 110 million people per year and MMR vaccine is given to 10 million people per year acknowledgement we are thankful to our president shivaji rao s jondare sir our secretary geeta khare ma'am and our principal sir dr nitin mohide thank you